What's up, YouTube? Welcome to the Hot Sauce. This is Angel Planel, a registered dietitian nutritionist in Seattle, Washington. I just cracked 100 subscribers, and the goal is to make it to 250. So do me a solid and like, comment, and subscribe, and let's get right into it. Today, we are going to feature Amy Kimberlin, a registered dietitian that resides in Miami, Florida. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome back to the hot sauce. Today we have a special guest and good friend of ours, Amy Kimberlin. So would you go ahead and introduce yourself and just tell us about yourself? I'm going to put you in the hot seat for a second since you are the one, you got the mic. And yeah, just tell us Thank about you. yourself. Tell us about the journey and go for it. The floor is yeah, yours. Thanks for having me, Angel. This is great. I love to talk about how it all started and where I'm at now, right? And I had a reflection the other day when we were talking about doing this and it's interesting because when I went into college, I had no idea what I wanted to do. And when I went into that first nutrition class, maybe a similar story for other dietitians out there, I was like, this is an interesting area. And then when I went home and I started talking to my mom, I honestly forgot she was a home economics teacher. Now I say honestly forgot because it was seamless in her way that she introduced nutrition to us as kids growing up. And the fact of the matter is, is it was already being taught to me over time. And so when I sat in that class, while that was my aha moment, that's what I wanted to do. It really started from way back before. And so I would definitely say my mom was an inspiration in getting into the field of nutrition. And while I didn't understand all the classes that were to come with all the hard science and all of that, it definitely paved the way for me to be able to make that decision on my own. So even as much as she wanted me to maybe do that, <laughs> It was for me that ability to, to navigate the decision and say, yeah, this is what I want to do full force. Now, I think the joke is we always love food. Who wouldn't want to study food? But I've always loved prevention, Angel. And I think that as I continued in that path of nutrition, the other connection for me and wanting to really study it more is ever since I was a kid, I used to chew meat, spit it out. <laughs> um, and I laugh because we didn't have an animal that would benefit from that. <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> so as I was in classes and learning all about nutrition, I was like, guess what? I don't have to eat it. I can be okay. I know now what I need to replenish and replace when I'm taking something out. And for me, that was the, the other aha moment. This is the connection I need to be able to bring this awareness to others so that they also can really understand the food, the impact, and obviously the nutrition all things considered together. Now, obviously cultural, social, and all, all other things kind of combined together. But for me, that was super important because for many years I continued to eat things I didn't enjoy. And I thought it was because I had to. And the moment I really switched and wanted to have the ability to know what I needed to eat and how to replace it with what I was taking away, I was good to go. And I never felt better and I've never looked back. So that's kind of how I started in choosing nutrition and then I love teaching kids. So I definitely had that kind of, you know, mindset of how can I connect that within my journey? But I did my four years and I double majored in Spanish and nutrition and I work part time. And so I'm applying to internships and way back when they used to send out a, a message via one of those delivery companies. And I thought once I got that, I was in, <laughs> I did not get an internship my first year. And coming home to that message and not getting it, they give you a window of time where you can go and call to see what you could do better. And the truth is, is at the time, they had nothing to offer me to say, this is what you needed to do. They were just super competitive and also not many around. And for me, that was also the driving force to say, I need to finish this through. And so I went and I worked for a year. I got a certification just as like a breastfeeding educator. I, I practice my Spanish and I would say, even though I had a degree in it, you're not fluent. And so my first job out, I really practiced. I made sure I was doing the conversation that I needed to be able to communicate to people, right? The nutrition message I needed them to hear. And I went back and I reapplied because I knew I needed to make this happen. I wanted to be a dietitian. And you know how they say everything happens for a reason, Angel? Yeah, um, yeah laughing because it really in that year had I been so upset and just thrown it in and said I'm not doing this that year I worked at a facility where I had a dietitian on one end that she was morbidly obese by standards she was blind she had diabetes and she passed away that year 
she was the same age as my father. And I sat back and I, I was like, what am I supposed to, because when you're there, I don't think I really was like, what am I going to take away from this? I was just Mm -hmm. upset and obviously had to keep doing the day-to-day job. The other side, this other dietitian that would come, she came once a week to see some of the higher risk patients. She definitely had disordered eating. And I observed it in different times we would eat together. And I knew, obviously, looking back years later, I was there for a reason because that was pivotal for me in moving forward to say, how am I going to help people people not judge a book by its cover, right? We have This lady had a wealth of knowledge. She, to the moment she stopped working and was no longer able, she was there convincing mothers to breastfeed. I mean, how amazing with that I can't even tell you and just heartfelt and again she couldn't see anybody but people would come back and say I just wanted to let Beverly know I breastfed because of her and it was for me the most mind-blowing kind of like connection to say we do judge books by its cover and if we just sat to talk to people and had she would be the first to tell you, don't do what I say, you know, like, don't do what I did rather. I'm, I'm not like a walking, I just never was able to. And she would tell you her story of what went wrong. Mm-hmm. But on the other side, I was like, people see the other and think that's perfection. And I want to be that way. And I knew that wasn't truthful. So long story short, that's what helped me when I then reapplied just to, you know, again, be comfortable and saying I was there for a reason. And the second other why things happen for a reason, in my internship, I'm still close with three of the the girls, super close. They lived in the dorm and the year before, no one lived in the dorm. (laughs) So, you know, again, I think it speaks to, I may not have known in the moment why things were happening, but I knew moving forward, it did happen in its right time. So I did my internship um, at Baylor University Medical Center in Dallas. I stayed there for a few years after there was a position that was within WIC and then also the adult clinic. And in their 25 years, they had never had a dietitian. And I thought that was another kind of unique moment to create a program for them to be able to connect, like I said, that nutrition with chronic health disease and how can I prevent. And so I stayed there for a few years. I went out to visit my brother in San Diego and I said, I need to move there. And so I applied to a few positions and I moved out to San Diego. So kind of along this journey, Angel, it was interesting because I stayed with maternal health. I stayed in child nutrition and I didn't kind of branch out too much, to be honest. When I moved back to Miami, I actually even stepped away from nutrition and I taught second grade for a couple of years because I was still kind of wondering what I needed to do. I also bought a house at the time and the grant fell through on one position and I didn't have it, but you know, the truth is, is as I was teaching second grade, while I love kids and I love the teaching part, that still for me was that indication that I need to get back into teaching nutrition, not just teaching. And any chance I could, I would bring in the fun Friday, they would taste test foods. And, you know, again, maybe it was a date nut mixture and it looked like a cockroach. So I wanted to gross the kids out, <laughs> but it was that first, it was that first experience for them to see it. We were learning, um, how you transform shapes. And so we took it to turn it into something else. And when they didn't see it as the date, right? Like then they're trying it with open arms and just cool key moments with kids because their experience for that first time, you know, I planted seeds in that time period. I had done a childhood obesity prevention program as well. That's the grant that fell through. But, you know, I think for me, it was still like, what am I going to do next? And so, This comes back to the area of nutrition that I said I would never do was diabetes. And so I had an opportunity to work with a Native American reservation and I did that. I had a really long commute, but then the position came up where I said, the area I said I would never do is here with wide open arms. Do I jump at it and do I go, or do I still stay a little scared and think that's not for me? In that first year, I worked at one of the university centers here for a diabetes center. And I can tell you, I learned the most I've ever learned. I jumped in and I had to really study things. Those endocrinologists expected you to know insulin to carb ratio, insulin sensitivity factor, how to adjust the pumps, look at those CGMs. And I was like, and I had to pause for a moment because 
I knew, like I said, it was an area I wasn't completely comfortable in teaching. And yet here I was working with patients with type one that probably knew more than me, at least I thought, right? And so I did, I would go home every night and I would study and I would learn and I would read. I read Sugar Surfing by Stephen Ponder, one of the best books out there just to learn perspective from somebody with type one. Um, and I really applied it as I was moving forward. Best experience of my life. And I obtained my CDCES afterwards. And from there, I then pivoted to a position in a hospital location here in Miami that was for wellness. And so everything we do is you know, completely free to the community. I do specialize in diabetes. And so I've been working with the diabetes prevention program for the last four years. And it's been a unique experience because ev everything we're doing is free and it's prevention. And it's so interesting to see how many people come right to our programs and stuff. What I would say that has been interesting. So I've been here for five years now, <laughs> half has been virtual. <laughs> and I laugh because we lose track of time and how much time and I've been working in this realm of, you know, trying to connect with people from afar, but it's, we're starting to resume obviously in person that's been happening, but it's, you know, a little bit more limited. And so as we're moving forward and doing these programs, that's when I feel most alive to be able to present and do a cooking class or a cooking demo right there before people. So I just got recently reappointed to a cardiology division in the hospital system. And so I'm pretty excited for like what my next steps will be. I'm going to bring everything on this journey, Angel, into what I'm doing currently. So I'm going to be doing one-on-ones. I'm going to be doing group education. I'm going to be doing some cooking demos slash classes. And who knows what else? I think it's an interesting area to be able to now pursue because they've never had a dietitian. There's 38 cardiologists. And I think that this is just the beginning of more. Um, I'll talk a little bit about what I do on the side um, as other growth opportunities in a minute, but that's kind of been my journey. Never expected to enter nutrition. The first nutrition class for me was like, okay, I think I, I want to do this. I mixed it with Spanish because I knew I wanted to be able to communicate to others that may not be able to understand just the fir their first language not being English. So I wanted to be able to communicate to many others as well. And that's why I grabbed the Spanish. And now, you know, through my journey across country back home to Miami, it really truly is an important component. Um, I may say a word and it may be different in many different countries. And so therefore I know, ver you know, I have to show a visual because I'm a visual learner anyways, but I think it's just so amazing to be able to see how appreciative people are that you can connect with them, help them learn, changing small little things that can make a huge impact with nutrition. Absolutely. Well, I, I'm going to say that that's, a, that's an amazing story considering your mother did home ec, you taught, <laughs> you, you, you went into areas that you weren't really interested in, and yeah. then you found out you love them, and just a, just a whole journey. That's, a, that's an amazing story, so I was glad I got to, I got to hear that firsthand, because that's pretty awesome. Um, well, thank you. Thank you for sharing. That, that, was, that was lovely yeah. to hear. Um, well, let's talk about, uh, you've been a media spokesperson for how many years now, would you say? It's been... Entering year four. Four. Wow, it's kind of amazing. And I know most of that has been during the COVID. virtual period. <laughs> COVID, so, so, yeah. Well, what would you say is um, or has been the most enlightening and the most humbling aspect of doing media work? What, what, would, you, what would you have to say? Gosh, it's been such a journey. And so, you know, thinking back to, I've done a lot of print. Um, I know I challenged myself because with COVID, it's been harder to obtain stuff within, you know, like in person. I did a little early on when we still had in studio and then it was COVID. And now moving forward, I know that's what I'm challenging myself to be able to move forward and do is just to have more opportunities on TV if possible. Obviously doing podcasts and stuff have been fun as well. So it kind of has changed things. I would say for me, the enlightening moment is we really truly are the food and nutrition experts and being able to present that information is great, but it's so crazy how quickly one phrase can turn to something different. And I learned that early in my, my first few months. I know everybody kind of told me about it and it, you know that experience of it, but when it happens to you, I immediately was messaging, oh my goodness, can I have this you know article retracted? Like I didn't say that, you know, when my name's attached to it. And honest, that was hard for me because it really wasn't what I said. And they attached it to something that was another phrase before. So I didn't really say it. And so, but if you looked really quick, you thought I said it. And 
So long story short, I'm still I'm still a little traumatized by an angel, but I mean, that, was, that was the humbling experience because I needed to be so careful in everything that I said. Yes, and yes. even though as I'm talking now and I maybe, sh you know, went on too long with my spiel and, and stuff. Oh, no. No, I have to be more succinct. And that was my other, I can talk, I can gab. But when I'm giving the interview, sometimes we're just obviously talking a little bit more low key, but when right. I'm doing my print ones, quick, succinct, this is what I'm saying. And, th and that's for me, honestly, been the humbling part and also enlightening too, because I feel I have so much more to say and I could explain it so much better, but they, they, they don't need all of that. They need it quick, short, and sweet. Right. Yeah. It's a, it's a little different than working with a patient because a patient, you can spend 15, 20 minutes, uh, a media article, they might use you for a couple of sentences. And so that's a bit hard and, and definitely, you know, a lot of us carry a lot of, uh, an abundance of information. We have to be able to deliver it concisely so we don't overwhelm the consumer or whoever the intended audience is. And yeah, definitely being misquoted, you know, you say something, they, they put it in a different way. Yeah. Uh, it, it can be bad. So yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Um, learn so, from me. Learn from me. <laughs> hey, it's all good. I well, like I said, we all learn from each other. There's no right. need to reinvent the wheel. I mean, we all we all have been through it, and the people before me and the people after us, they'll yeah. all be kind of going through it. So we just learn as we go. So next question for you. So if you could do it all over again in your career, what would you change and what would you keep the same? Now I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on a limb and usually when I ask this question. I know people are like, I wouldn't change anything, but, you know, and your, your journey has been so unique in anything, you know, if there was something you would change or, or, you know, yeah, just kind of, what, what would you say? It's always the coulda, woulda, shoulda, right? Um, if, if I looked back though, Angel Honest, in truth, I would have done my higher education when I didn't get the internship. It sounds like it would have been like that next step easy, right, to be able to do in a moment where I had my undergrad, I should have gone on for higher ed. But I honest, when I did two degrees in four years, and I also worked part time, I just thought I need to get out in the workforce and get some experience versus moving forward. So I think if honestly, that was the flashback to way back when I would have gone ahead for the masters in the moment, because I think it's, mm -hmm. you know, you look towards now, I obviously obtained a CDC. Yes, I am actually applying for masters come January. I'm starting. So you look 20 something years later and I feel I, I need it in order to continue to learn, continue to grow and being able to enhance what it is that I'm able to do, which I'll be specializing a little bit more in cardiovascular health. And so those are some of the classes I'll be taking as well as just insulin, you know, the cardio metabolic, everything combined. So my diabetes background will help, but I am pursuing some of the other areas in order to be able to improve my knowledge base and, you know, stay current and learn, like I said, all that I can. So I'm always staying willing to, to, to do so. And then I joked about it. I mean, obviously if I thought back, you know, I would have loved to have obtained an internship that first year, but I think that's also still communication to interns that I work with now. The, the truth is, is it really truly is a path and a journey and be open to everything that's there before you. And I, if I, I couldn't have done it a different way. Right. And if it speaks to like, I could have gotten frustrated and not done it, but so I'm pleased that I continued with it to follow through and be able to really continue doing what I love, which I'm so passionate about. Right. Well, I mean, that's, that's kind of the cool thing about it is that here you are, you've, you've, Definitely uh, not getting an internship could be a uh, distressing aspect yeah. and you could totally throw in the towel and be like, I'm out, I'm, I'm going to go do something else. And then you're not the person you are today. Right. And so it's good for people to hear, you know, just like and, and resonate with with your story. You know, clearly you. Yeah, you're doing well. You're doing what you love. Uh, you're able to not just work with individuals in Miami, but do media and do right. things around the world. And uh, that's, I mean, shoot, what can you say? That's awesome. <laughs> so, so bravo to you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. It's hard, but it's hard angel. So to that point, I think it's, you know, I've been working with a few interns in my position now, like as they come through and it's, it's hard because I think those are some of the discussions with them. We work with a facility here that it started back when I 
graduated, it was in you're with women, infants, and children, and they do a dual kind of internship where you work for them, you're able to apply, and then you continue on. And that was another path that I could have gone down, but I actually didn't apply to it. Not because I, I thought that's an amazing path, but I still was so challenged with myself that I said, no, I want the, the, my number one choice. And I went back and I did things to improve. And I think that speaks to what I've explained to interns is that it's the hard work. It's your determination and showing how are you working to improve yourself? And then obviously the field of nutrition as well, because that next year, Angel, I really, I had to do a, a, a quick turnaround to be able to say, I need to, to, to do something this year to show that I'm, I'm growing. I can't have the same application process. What, what did I do in the in-between? Right, right. Well, definitely. And I mean, that's a, that's a great perseverance story right there. So yeah. awesome. Well, uh, next question is, what does the future hold for you? Mm-hmm. What would you say? I know you just got this cardiovascular job. Yeah. You're year four media spokesperson. What What is the future holding for you? Yeah, so I already kind of alluded to those things. And so that's kind of what I'm doing with professional. And then what I've been doing kind of on the side, Angel, and COVID really kind of helped me to have more time to be able to do so, but actually started working real serious on my blog. Um, and I've actually am now, I have a live website, which I never had before. I'm publishing recipes. I went a little bit more in depth into food photography and that's kind of what I do as hobby, where it will go in the future. I don't know, but I do know that I continue to work on doing things that I love in my free time and whether that turns into profit or not later on, I think it will kind of come back full circle with everything that I'm doing. And then if I do decide to, I'm going to focus on the masters first (laughs) and and then we'll see where I go. But I do think, you know, I have an entrepreneurial spirit in me and I think it's only going to kind of move forward with everything now coming together with all the the different kind of areas that I I am focused in. It can be some one-on-one possibly, it can be some group talks. And, you know, I think again, to what I said earlier, not ever, you know, thinking that you can't do something I presented at the local diabetes association in the past year angel and there was somebody there from the mayo clinic and i think you just have to stay open to these opportunities i never would have thought i'd be able to be presenting at a national conference and next year i will be so what the future holds for me is that one i'm staying open um i'm continuing to learn and grow and who knows what the future holds for me on the entrepreneurial side i love it i love it Well, the final question for you is any words of wisdom for the next generation of dietitians? And I mean, you've dropped a lot of different gems throughout. So so if you want to, you can, you can, uh, whatever you want to say, but yeah, what do you think? Any words of wisdom for the next generation of upcoming students? No, I think it is, you know, staying open because where I thought I would never enter into diabetes, look at where I am now. And it was always one of those areas in the intern rotations where I was like, Ooh, I don't understand that. But I think if I had learned a little bit more, I would have felt confident earlier to maybe pursued it earlier on, right? And I'm not looking back saying I should have, but I guess my encouragement to interns is stay open, really obviously work hard in that internship and be able to see all the different areas because you might think that's not what you would like to pursue and it ends up being the thing you really do enjoy and love. And I think that those, that's what I typically tell interns. And while it sounds obvious, it's important because sometimes I know for myself, I don't know about you, Angel, but it's, it's like an area I put the wall up and then I'm not even like kind of open. So I, when I get the interns early on in their rotations, I'm like, stay open. You really, truly never know. And connect oh, just how we've been doing. And, and, you know, we're, we're back in person with conferences and things that I started getting more involved in the local diabetes association. And I think those are how the connections happen as well. So staying open, connect and learn from each other. I love it. Well, with that being said, thank you very much for your time. I uh, appreciate everything you've been doing and love seeing your journey from afar. And if I make it out to Miami, I definitely will say hello. And uh, bye. I'm also on the platform Buy Me a Coffee. This is a platform that allows creators like myself to create content and get rewarded in. There a variety of payments. I've decided to do it via coffee. So if you'd like to buy me a coffee, you can do so. And if you want to send one to the uh, individual I'm interviewing, send it to me and I will send it their way. With that being said, thank you very much for being here with us today. I hope you really enjoy the video and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.